Mira, I'm really excited to catch up with you here at Mobile World Congress to talk about uh, non-terrestrial networks. You know, as I've been around the FIRA, there's been a lot of emphasis on this vision for ubiquitous connectivity, right? Which necessarily implies integration of terrestrial and non-terrestrial networks. But I was hoping you could kind of set the stage for us in terms of where we are today with the standardization and technology and then your research and development roadmap towards that vision for ubiquitous connectivity. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. So uh, the NTN network for cellular um, connectivity has started to be defined at 3GPP release 17 and now our team is working towards prototyping NTN communications aligned with release 17 in partnership with Ericsson and uh, Thales in France and Europe. And we are working towards realizing and defining features like um, handover, for example, and uh, defining the protocols that will um, enable the future NTN devices. And it's important to get uh, the benefit of the terrestrial networks and uh, get the NTN and the TN within the same standards, then we can easily um, ensure the continuity of service. Okay. Yeah. And then maybe you can help me understand some of the key challenges you and your colleagues are going to have to work through. I, I know Doppler shifts got to be one of them and then the long round trip times for uh, LEOs, but just uh, what, what do you see those as? Indeed, there are long propagation delays to consider um, a, a strong Doppler shift when we communicate with the, sat the LEO satellite. So we need to establish frequency offsets, compensations, and timing offset compensations, and define the algorithms that can handle that, uh, as well as uh, because the satellites, the LEO satellites move quite fast, we need also to consider the handover from a satellite to another, which we call NTN to NTN handover. And the handover from terrestrial network to non-terrestrial network and vice versa. So all these aspects are important and we are considering as a design and also aligned with the 3GPP as also in uh, the prototyping. And then uh, this next question, not related to NTNs, but you mentioned it to me before we, we started uh, on camera here and it's just really, really interesting. Holographic communications, can you just tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing in that area? Indeed, uh, in the context of the immersive communication and XR research, uh, my team is looking into holographic communications because it will be one of the next step and the next key features for the immersive communications. And uh, it brings uh, more depth to the image and uh, it's as if we are together, but uh, we can be situated in different cities. And this is exactly what we do in partnership with the research center in Spain, I took out, and we could uh, demonstrate a holographic call between Lannion in France and Barcelona. And also this requires some optimizations and design in terms of protocol to handle uh, the latency constraints, the power consumption constraints, and all the aspects, the technical requirements for these applications. Well, Amira, it's fascinating work that you and your colleagues are doing, and I really appreciate you taking the time to share some of the details with us. Thank you so much. Thank you.